Chevrolet, there's nothing more American. Over 500 million Chevys have rolled off assembly lines in the last century, and the cream of the crop are right here on the Menard Chevy Show. There are about a half million people in Kansas City, and I think most of them are here. We're right next to the Kansas City International Airport, and this is the 11th annual KCI Cruise Car Show. You are gonna love this first car. It's the winner of our OPGI Original Award. I am Dave, this is Dave, this is his grandson Dave, and this is his dad, Dave. And Dave, you've got this beautiful 1973 Chevelle wagon. Tell me about this car. How hard is it to find one of these? In 1973, Chevrolet was going to discontinue the Chevelle Super Sport option. So to send it out with a bang, they decided to go ahead and offer it on the Malibu wagon. Unfortunately, over the years, a lot of them didn't survive. So out of the 900 to 1,200 that were made, there's approximately 20 left in existence with 10 in running condition. And this particular one here with this color and caliber is the only dark red one left. Very original interior, et cetera, uh, F41 suspension, the heavy duty cooling, turbo front, transmission, 308 gears. So she runs down the road pretty good for a 1973 time. Very much sleeper. As a matter of fact, the original one that my parents parents had was an SS350, same color, same plant, same month, same week build, and I used to race that when I took my driver's test in it, and a special reason why they're so sentimental, I used to take my mother to the store, uh, we lost her this year, and this car is dedicated to her. You get it with a base 350 or the SS454, which in this point I'm very fortunate to have the Y-Code 454. It's stock compression, eight and a half to one. I put a little bit of a step over stock cam in it and it looks factory, but it does have a Carter Competition 750 and recurve distributor and stock exhaust. So it's just enough that it gets it out of 1973 standards and the air conditioner still works. How important was it for you to keep this car looking stock? Many Chevelle enthusiasts don't know that the 1973 Chevelle SS wagon even exists. So to keep it as close to original as possible is, is gonna be my goal. Putting a window sticker back on it. It allows people to see what it would have looked like in 1973. And it looks authentic thanks in no small part to OPGI. Dave's an OPGI regular and a big fan of their customer service. He says that's where he got everything from the badges to the taillight lenses and chrome valve covers. Boy is this an American classic. It's a 1955 Bel Air and it belongs to Kansas City's Pete Graham. And we think it's a great choice for our first producer's pick. A friend of mine had it up in the West, and he was asking $2,000, and he was a really good friend, and I told him, you know, I think it's worth more than that. So I got him up to 2500 and he took it. It's the only case I've ever heard bargaining somebody up for a car. That's the only time I've ever done it. <laughs> it took seven years to build it, and it's been on the road about 10 years. How much of the work did you do yourself? Uh, everything but the paint. Mike Zinovich, Z's Radical Rods, he's did a great job on the flames. And what do you have under the hood? It's a crate motor, 350, 330 horse, four take heads. It's not a drag car or anything. It goes pretty good. What is it about the 55s that you like so much? I think I used to be into like the 57s, and then the uh, years went by, and I had a 55 when I was a teenager and just wanted another one. I've always liked them. I see you brought the whole family with you. They're in the car? Yeah, I'm going to check on them. I haven't looked at them here lately. <laughs> kind of quiet, you know. Here's a producer's pick that'll take you back in time a half century. If you want to know what it was like when a 1967 Nova SS rolled off the assembly line, look no further than this example by Roger Wheeler. How important was it for you to get it close to the original like this? Well, I just like the appearance of the, the stock Nova. It, uh, the lines are I really liked on it. That was kind of the car I wanted when I was in high school. It didn't quite look like it does today. It was a drag car. The wheelhouse has been cut out for the big drag tires. Vinyl top has been ripped off of it. It has a different engine, definitely, than what it's got in it now. It's got a period correct tack in it, which was an option you could buy. The only other options on the car was the four speed and the rear seat speaker. No air steering didn't come with it, so that's the way it is. I did put a set of wheels on it now. When I first did it, I had white wall tires and the spinner hubcaps, which made it look all period correct, and I got kind of tired of it. A lot of people have told you that the vinyl top is not correct, but you say no. I've had probably 15, 20 people come up that really know their cars and tell me about how Nova's never had vinyl tops. Well, 
it says right on the cow tag that it has a vinyl top. Now, stock SS came with plenty of horsepower. What makes this thing go? This one is a 327, 275 horse, which is the biggest horsepower you could get in 67. In 66, you could get a 350 horse. But they dropped production in 67. Supposedly, five or six or seven of them got out of the plant in 67, and I definitely don't have one of those. What's the coolest thing about driving a car like this? I've got three other cars, and when we drive our old cars more than we do our new ones, probably. I guess just the joy of getting to drive something that you've built and looks good. This is a 1965 Chevy C10 pickup, but I'm in the back seat. That's a hard thing to find. We'll tell you more about it when we come back to the Menard Chevy Show in Kansas City. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Clamp Tight, the clamp making tool. DJS Fabrications, the best mobile car dolly built today. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. Welcome back to Kansas City. This next machine is brought to you by Zing T, and it is naturally cool. The Chevy Suburban is the longest running model of any vehicle made in the United States and George Austin has a fabulous 1953. George, where did you find this vehicle? Down by California, Missouri. The Manhattan storage locker for 12 years and I was trekking down and bought a car. What is it about the 1953 that strikes your fancy? I've always liked the grills in the 53 Chevrolet's and the body lines all together. years and years ago and I just thought that it's easier to have a car like this to carry stuff inside rather than the back of a pickup truck and they are unusual I like them. How close is this vehicle to stock? Well the outside is almost completely stock. The uh, motor transmission rear end air conditioning is not stock. What's under the hood? It has a 93 uh, tune port Camaro motor in it. What made you go with that? I had to have it <laughs> before I bought this thing. <laughs> The interior is spectacular. Who did that for you? A really good friend of mine, his name's Don Kite. He's absolutely impeccable in his work. He has the leather seats, but the seats are all stock also. And uh, other than that, extra cushioning, and just, he did a magnificent job. How much do you drive? Quite a bit. Started on 2010 and finished about three years later. It's got like almost 14,000 miles on now. How gratifying is it to have a project like this, to have had your hands on every inch of this car and now to be able to drive something you worked on? What's gratifying is when somebody that you know knows about cars and they appreciate it, then that makes me feel good about that, yes. Lots to feel good about for sure. That Suburban is naturally cool and it's brought to you by Zing T. If your vehicle's red, beautiful and from 1953 then it is in this segment michelle kite has this lovely 1953 chevy bel air now this project was 30 years in the making why did it take so long well it didn't really get started until about two years ago it's always been in the plan it just we never had the time to work on it it's a body off rotisserie restoration the interior is an exact replica of the original it's just leather instead of vinyl all the trim and chrome and everything on this is original so the only thing we really changed is the running gear what kind of engine do you have under the hood? It's a 350 Chevy crate engine, 330 horsepower. Easterwood chassis did the chassis. Talon's Hot Rod did the paint. They're the best painters ever. My husband did the interior, but we took it apart and put it back together. How much does a project like this help or hurt your marriage? Oh, we're fine with it. I'm a gearhead at heart, so we get along great in the garage. <laughs> Check out this sweet 1965 C10 pickup. It's owned by Roger Gleaves, and it's the winner of this week's Rock Auto Restored Award. Is this crew cab stock? It was something that you could go to the Chevrolet dealer, and they had a silver book that they would show you. You'd order your pickup, and they would ship the truck to a coach builder. In what condition did you find this? Fairly rusty truck, but all the pieces are available for it, and you can come up with them pretty readily. The way you described it to me, it's a bit of a Frankenstein. The mirrors on the truck are 63 to 67 Corvette. The steering wheel is 65 Corvette, teakwood wheel. 
the seats are 63 to 67 Corvette. A lot of GM could have happened things from the time period that the truck was built. What parts was it important to keep stock? I wanted it a lower stance, you know, just wanted to kind of do a street ride, but I wanted it to look stock from the outside. What do you have under the hood? It's a GM Performance Parts LSX 454 with a GM Performance Parts 4L80E transmission and their wiring harness and computer for it, and it does a very good job with it. I did all the framework and all the motor and transmission and the chassis. My buddies Wayne and Will Kymick own a body shop and they took all my Frankensteining and made it really look good and look correct. What parts did you get from Rock Auto for this restoration? I got a grill and then I got a lot of the tools that I use I got through Rock Auto and their, their website's user friendly and really intuitive. What makes you decide, okay, I'm finished. <laughs> There's only two places that you're going to end up when you run out of money or it's shiny and done. The wood in the bed, it's a bit of a tribute, isn't it? Yeah. My dad was a woodworker and he didn't understand the car hobby. They were transportation to him. He helped me lay out how the wood would go in the bed. He didn't live to see the finished product, but on sunny days like this, he gets to look down and see it. We know he'd be very proud. That's Roger Gleaves, winner of the Rock Auto Restored Award. It's almost too much to see. Great looking cars in every direction here at KCI, including Jim Parkinson's 67 Camaro RS SS 350. More great hardware from the Menard Chevy Show coming up next. Welcome back to the Menard Chevy Show. We're having a blast at the annual KCI Cruise Car Show near the Kansas City Airport. I'm a big fan of this next car and I'm sure you will be too. It's Roger Crone 72 Nova SS and it's brought to you by Classic Parts of America. Basically it's a totally original car other than a few chassis changes, original sheet metal on it. The car has been original all its life. I'm probably the third licensed owner. Tell me about the interior. The interior is all stock, and it's original. The vinyl top on the car is original. How do you keep a car like this in such good shape? That car's never been in the rain. You always keep it wiped down, stuffed, just unconsciously after a while. There are a few things on this that aren't stock. The motor has a 350 cubic inch with dart heads on it, polished and ported. It's balanced. It's got MSD suspension on it, big tube headers on it. It's got a 12 bolt rear end with 355 gears in it. It's got a 350 turbo with a stall converter in it. And it's got street light wheels on it with BF Goodrich tires. Other than that, it's all original body. Never been dented, wrecked, nothing. The paint job on this looks brand new, but it's been a while since it's been painted, right? 30 years. And it's a pretty special looking paint. Tell me about that. Glass route paint. It's a German paint, actually, when they've done the paint job on it. It's called Sequoia Green. Actually, an original Chevy color. Yep. They say necessity is the mother of invention, which leads to the story of the transmission on the car. Well, this was a factory four-speed console delete car. And about 10 years ago, I broke my ankle. And so I had to put an automatic with a stall converter in it. But it's a factory four-speed car, still got the pedals in it. I've had it back a couple times, but put the automatic back, just put a four-speed back in it, and bell housing, clutch, and four-speed again. Most folks we talk to put a new engine in a car, they go for the bigger motor. You kind of went the other direction, why is that? The motor I did have in a small block, it made 650 horse with a 250 horse nitrous on it. So I took all that out as I got older, <laughs> didn't want all that. So I put a nice four and a quarter horse small block in it. It's drivable, it's easy to go anywhere in it. it, doesn't eat you up. What a great car, brought to you by Classic Parts of America. Here's another great one, a 1967 Corvette. It belongs to Kansas City's Doug Sears, and it's our next producer's pick. How hard is it to find a body in that good a condition from that year? It's difficult, because this 50-year-old car, everything you see has been hit somewhere in its lifetime. But, you know, even when we bought this car, we didn't know until we took the paint off of it, and it was no hit. We were pleasantly surprised, to say the least. Just tell me what you have under the hood. It's an LS7 with a trimming five behind it. It's got a SR3 Motorsports tube frame, and it's got Dana 36 rear end under it. Runs and drives good. 
The interior is mainly reproduction. It's all Al Knox stuff, carpet, door panels, seats. So we were going for the stock look with modern stuff underneath. We put the wheels on it just to give it a little flash, but the rest of it needed to stay original. There's so much going on in the Corvette world today with restamping blocks and stuff. I just wanted to get away from that. I just wanted something unique. And this with the LS7, I believe I got that. The 63 to 67, I think, is the best looking years. I think it's about the most popular years. They're getting more and more expensive and they're harder to find. Well, I won't tell your brother next to you that you said your era of Corvette's better looking than his. A lot of people will disagree with me. You know, a lot of people like the C1s, but you know, everybody has their preference. You know, he just happens to like C1s better than I do. How gratifying is it to do this much work on a car and end up with something like this? It's, it feels good. You know, you know, when I bought this car, I thought I'd keep it for a couple of years and then sell it, but I don't think so. I think I want to keep it. It's just a lot of fun. The sun is setting here in Kansas City, but we're not done. More of the Menard Chevy Show still to come. The Menard Chevy Show is brought to you by Heat Shield Products, America's high performance insulation. R3 Performance, quality parts, attention to detail, and innovative design. Champion Cooling Systems, high performance aluminum radiators. And by Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. Welcome back to Kansas City. I'm Dave Dobson, and this is the Menard Chevy Show. Now, some folks say the first generation of Chevelles was the best looking, and Bob Baker's 67 makes a strong case for that. It's our next producer's pick. Wife bought it about 13 years ago, was thought I needed a hobby, so we progressed from there to here. <laughs> Do you think she regrets getting you into this hobby? Oh, I don't think so, no, I don't believe she does. She enjoys it, see. What kind of condition was the car in when you found it? Body-wise, it's pretty good shape, but mechanically it needed quite a bit of work done on it, which luckily I could do myself. So. Rebuilt the motor, transmission, rear end, radiator had to be replaced, brakes. And how about the interior? No, it's pretty much stock. It was a pretty nice car, cosmetically. This car originally came with a 396, but you've upgraded that a little bit, right? The motor had been changing when I got it. It was actually a 427. The 67 is a car that was near and dear to you. You used to have one when you were younger. Yes, sir. I had one uh, right out of high school. I drove it for a couple years ago. My wife and I were dating, and somebody come along and thought it was worth more than I did, so I sold it. <laughs> I've always been kind of a car nut, but uh, just too tight to spend the money to buy one. I guess that's why my wife had to jump in and bail me out. <laughs> The KCI Cruise Car Show has absolutely blown us away. Joe McBride is KCI's marketing manager and he's seen the show grow from the beginning. About 11 years ago we uh, started the KCI Cruise as a community outreach event for the Kansas City International Airport. A number of us guys that work at the airport and concessionaires, airlines and whatnot are car guys. So we decided let's just have a car show. What better way than to invite the community up to the airport for a reason different than flying. We've had to move several times because we outgrew the location. So we finally found a great venue. In 2017, we estimate about 1,000 cars, and we're thinking of pushing 2,000 this year. We want it to be a charity event giving back to the community, so what we try to do is tweeten the deal by trying to find some great prices that people want to donate money for to try to win. And this year we've teamed up with a company that's helping us take it to a new level by having more food trucks than I always wanted to do, having more vendors, and boosting up by marketing better to try to get a better variety and more people out here. Why should folks bring the family out here to the KCI Cruise? This is a great place to come check out cars because we're not snobs about the vehicles. It's run what you brung. If you like a VW, you like a Chevy Caprice or a Fiat, bring it on out. And that makes it a great mix for a family to check out cars, even if they don't like cars. Tell me about the car you brought here. I have a 1970 Chevrolet Monte Carlo that's basically stock except for some exhaust that makes it sound like the motor has more than it really does. What are the reactions you get from folks who bring their cars out here to show? I've had people come up to me and they say I came from Jefferson City, Missouri, which is in the middle of the state, so that's about a three or four hour drive. So the thing that really gets me is people go to a lot of car shows in here in town and they, they see stuff here that they don't see anywhere else. And it's at the end of the year, it's the best way to crown off the car season here in Kansas City. Time for one last producer's pick, and this one was definitely worth the wait. We love the rarities here at the Menard Chevy Show, and you'd be hard-pressed to find another one of these. It's a 1963 Corvair 95 Rampside pickup truck. Gary Jones, how hard is it to find one of these? These are a little bit hard to find in that they rusted back in the days. How many of those do you own? I own only one. 
I do own 23 other Corvairs. I have coupes and convertibles and several turbo cars. I like them because they're simple machines, you can work on them, and there's lots of parts available. They made almost two million of these from 1960 through 69. This truck was only made in 1961, 62, 63, and 64, and I don't know the exact number, but probably less than 15,000. Here in town, I could probably find 12, 15. Not all of them are on the road, but pretty good trucks. What were the other types available? There were ramp sides and load sides. And load side did not have the ramp, so you had to lift your cargo over the side. They were not very desirable. That's the only two trucks they made. They did make Greenbriars and Vans. Not a lot of them are around. Like any other Corvair, you find the engine in the rear. Tell me about that. This is a rear engine, the airplane type with the opposing cylinders. This is a 110, and it's not a truck motor. This is a car motor, but it runs real good, and it's in very good shape. How much do you drive this one? Just recently started driving it on a regular basis, and I've probably put three or 400 miles on it since I got it painted and put together. How important is it for you to keep this truck looking like an original? I like originality. I'll put something different in tires and wheels, but I just like the original drivetrain and the way it was when it was made. We are out of sunlight, and we are out of time. Thanks for coming along with us to Kansas City. We've seen some amazing cars and met lots of nice folks along the way. Be sure to join us next time for another Menard Chevy Show. So long from Kansas City.